All right, so um, welcome to our first session of CFC Information Technology. Um, it's the basic, the beginning, how it all begins. That's what I always dub this aspect of the syllabus, how it all begins. Now, there has been some changes, a lot of new changes to the CFC syllabus, which I actually appreciate. I mean, before now, let's jump to the, the whole aspect, uh, talk about hardware and jump to hardware and start to speak about that. And there are a lot of things that, that have background information that we actually need before we actually jump into certain aspect of IT. You know, the syllabus has revised to include um, a little introduction to information technology. And one actually give some definition of the basic terms as relates to information technology. And as you see on this presentation, my name is Javel Page. Um, and I'll be doing more of the session um, in preparation for CXC coming up shortly. Now, without any further ado, let us actually jump right into the program. Now, what we want to do today, we want to look at what information technology is and define certain terms as relates to information technology, such as a computer, a computer system. We also want to list the different types of computer system and explain the functions of hardware. Now, before going go any further, I want to think about information technology. The first thing that comes to most of us mind is a computer, right? Uh, some might say a computer system. Now, when we talk about computer system, what are we really talking about? Some of us might see a computer system as just um, a desktop to you. That is only that's a computer system to you. But a computer system is not only a desktop, but your regular mobile phone, your tablet, your iPad, even some TV nowadays are, are classified as computer system nowadays. That's a lot of different types. Now, in order for anything to be classified as a computer system, it must have two basic components, as I call it. It must have the hardware and it must have the software. Again, it must have the hardware and it must have the software. Now, the software is said to be the part that we cannot touch, but I, I don't like to give you that definition. Now, the software is generally given to a computer program that tells the hardware how to work, while the hardware is a physical component which takes instruction from the software. With that said, a software can cause severe damage to your, your computer hardware, and that is proven on many different occasions. Um, let us actually look at the different, the different types of computer systems. As I said before, um, back in the days, we know that different types of computer systems used to be a supercomputer, a mainframe computer, we have one called Mini, and some other one. Now, that has changed because of the improvement into technology, and some of these um, changes will come out into this presentation, all right? So as I said, to want to list and explain the different functions of the hardware in this presentation. Now, let us first let's define um, computers. Based on the definition, a computer is an electronic device that manipulates information or data and output results. So the computer, um, accept data using input, it then send that information to for it to be manipulated using the CPU. Then the CPU then um, probably call on this, the, the CU and the, the ALU and the register to help it in the process, then it just send it out to the output. You now, what I explained a while ago is known as the data processing cycle. And as we said, we learned more about that. I'm just giving a little explanation as to what the computer really does. What happened when I, when I put the flash drive in the computer? Um, what happened when I even turn on the computer? All of those things will be coming out into this presentation. We can get a better understanding of how a computer system actually works. Now, a computer system are collections of hardware and software that are designed to receive, process, manage, the instruction data given by the user to return output in the form of human readable language. And what we always remember is that the computer does not understand 
English and Spanish and French. It understands machine language. Uh, we may know it as binary. Doesn't matter what you know it as, but they are, they are both the same. Now, hardware, we said, as we said before, the tangible part of the computer system and software, the intangible part of the computer system. But please do not put that definition, the intangible part of the computer system. I don't like that definition. That doesn't explain anything to me, right? I need to know what a software really is. All right, so let's go ahead in the presentation. Now, just as though we human beings have our own characteristics, the computer has its characteristics as well. It can perform its operation with, with its amazing speed, reliability, accuracy, power, and communication capability. Right? So those are some characteristics which will go through all of these characteristics in this presentation. So speed. A computer can process billions of instructions in a single second. Right, and I will talk about um, processing blind information. Can't think about companies like JPS. JPS have to send their bill every single month. Do you think they do it manually? No, they don't do it manually. Right, the system actually do the calculation and produce all the billing and send it to the, all the different customers in, in one single operation. Right, we know we know the time, the date, everything when you should send that information without the user have to tell it. Well, the user actually tell it from before. Because one aspect of the, although I said that in order for something to be considered a computer system, it must have hardware, it must have software, but also it must have a user. Because you can't have a computer system and do not have a user. Well, this may not be on this level, but yes, every, every single computer system need a user. The user have to be the one to control. The user have to be the one to give the computer instructions and say, do this, do that. Yeah, we know that this, Control and do all of that, but the user, user is very important. The user is the one, is the first step in everything. The user is who create the system in the first place. So the user is a very important aspect. So there cannot be a computer system without a user. Basically, that's it. All right. Um, next class is reliability. Modern computer have the low, have a low failure rate, and they produce consistent result, which is true. What you put in is what you get out. You give it something wrong, you get back something wrong. You give it something correct, you get back something correct. It's what you give a system. It will, when you, any information you give it, it will produce it. Computers can work um, continuously and never go a strike. Unless there's a power cut. But you know, when you talk about strike, it's something that you have to actually get up and do. All right, I mean, I'm not going to do any work today. Like, oh, we can't do that every day. Okay, I'm not going to work tomorrow. The computer will never do that. Once the power, once power is going to the power supply and the system is power, it will do what it is supposed to do on a daily basis. Never strike. And accuracy, the computer produced error-free results if data is entered correctly, which that is what we said um, a short while ago. What you put in is what you get out. No, and you know, one of the is again is storage, which we don't actually can, um, communication, and and you know, we have job box. So, yes, there's job box, it comes back and replace people, and we've seen that I mean, all over the world. You know, as I said, technology is being improved every single day, and the more time they improve, the more it replaces people. I mean, factories, one of the time factories to use like a hundred person just to produce juices. Are, Bonds and whatever they are producing, as use a lot of people know sometimes they only need like cheap to control the machine. So, yes, the introduction, you know, the, well, the improvement of computer system is actually replacing um, manpower now. Um, computer hold personal information that may be misused, and we see that every single day. I don't want to talk about any affairs in our country, but well, let us leave that. But we see that happening in our country on a day-to-day -day basis where information, electronic information are being misused. We see, we see it all over the news. We see a lot of acting going on. When you think that person hack, where things happen, they steal information from the system. So yes, that's a big drawback. And one of the most, when, well, I think this, one, this is one of the most biggest job because you know, when your system is hacked, I mean, 95% of the time, you can't get back the information. And then next thing I can, catch that criminal. 
So I think one of the biggest job about about um come to um, system is too is that I mean it is now creating a different form of criminal organization. That is why many companies, well, many countries now have a, um, a cyber security unit. In Jamaica, we have one called MOCA. MOCA is what they all cyber security affair. Not that they are catching nobody, because they're not catching nobody, but they are the one who deal with that, because these people are not people that you can just easily catch. You can't catch them. Fuck the matter. Downtime. Palm Islands, when I come that cannot be used, certain tasks have to be done manually. I postpone, you know, over a period of time, a system having need a memory, a hard driver, you know, something, because it gives issue. Just like a human being can get sick and can't work, the computer might not get sick as often as us, but over a period of time, their parts might need to be replaced, which can, you know, cause a little downtime. And, you know, we can always replace it and fix it and, you know, upgrade and stuff like that. Yes, yeah, so let's continue. And Jarbox continue. We don't want to leave no more Jarbox. Now, types of computer system. And we have a list right here. We have supercomputer, mainframe computer, microcomputer, and we have a little breakdown on personal computer, mobile devices, embedded devices. I mean, in your own look at time, you can create a document and the types of computer and categorize them in terms of processing. Processing speed, storage, ability, and portability. But you can do that in your own reading. Just continue. Now, you can skip this one too. And let us go back to the hardware components. Right? So we said that the hardware is the physical components of a computer. We said that the hardware is what instruct. Well, well, no, sorry. The hardware is what take instruction from the software. And as we, as we said, the computer system is breaking down into two components. Um, we have the hardware and we have the software, right? And we're gonna look dive right into the hardware aspect of it and see how many areas in this we can actually cover. Now, hardware, and it gives some example, keyboard, mouse, scanner, disk drive, you know, those are some examples of hardware. Now, peripheral hardware component are usually outside the system. And you know, when you talk about hardware, think about peripheral device. So, I mean, a peripheral device, I mean, I don't really like this definition, but a peripheral device um, is anything that is attached to the computer and is controlled by the CPU, right? So it, every, the keyboard, the mouse, as a matter of fact, all input, output, and storage devices are peripheral devices. That's point blank. So all input, output, and storage devices are peripheral devices. All right, so, and you know, we are looking at here, it's like a quick diagram of, we're showing a little stuff here, we're showing a little um, diagram of um, the system unit, and um, I must mention this, over the years, we tend to mix up the system unit with the CPU. We may look at a little black box that you have, like a white or gray box that we have, and say, oh, that's a CPU, no, that is not a CPU. It's called a system unit. The CPU is a little small chip that is a little small little chip, a little black chip, or CPU right here. I'm not sure you've seen my pointer, but it's, it's actually showing the it's actually showing the CPU. There's like a little small um, ch um, chip that is actually located inside the computer. So never refer to the, the case as the CPU. It's called a system unit. That's the proper name for it. And that's a little picture of the motherboard. We're just showing a little some parts of the computer. Now, let us look at the hardware components, right? CPU. Um, and we said, as we said before, peripheral devices, input devices, output devices, and storage devices, all of those are classified as peripheral devices. Now, a peripheral device is not a core device for a computer, which means a computer can work without a peripheral device connect to it, connected to it. Yes, you don't need that mouse, you don't need a keyboard, you don't need nothing connected to it, but you don't connect the mouse and the keyboard, they can use it. But it doesn't, it doesn't mean that the computer cannot work. It can work, the power, you can press the power it come up and everything is there, the power light is there, it's working. We just can't use it. The peripheral device now I'll allow additional function on a computer system so that you, the user, can point and click and type and, you know, it allow an interface 
between you and the computer. That's what the peripheral device is really doing. All right? So let's move on quickly. Now, the basic function of a computer system, the three um, major function of any computer system, input, processing, output, and storage. So anytime you hear about function of a computer system, you're talking about IPOS, IPOS, input, processing, output, storage. We know that input accept the data, we're not processing, manipulate the data, we know that output produce the result, and we that storage keep um, data for future use. All right? So what we want to do you now is explain how these components actually interrelated. Now, what you're looking at here is called the IPOS cycle, and some person might know it as the data processing cycle. In my days, that's what we call it. The data processing cycle. But nowadays it's called the IPOS, right? Now, first it accepts data as input. It then sends to processing, um, which in processing, that's where the CPU jump in along with it is it is along with its companion. When I talk about companion, I talk about the CU, the ALU. The CU, the ALU, and the registry. Right, and we dive into that. Then after the C, after the, the CPU is actually doing its process, it decides, all right, we want to send it as storage and we want to just send it as output. Then it decides what it want to do, and it, it do in most in more cases it do both, send a storage and send an output. And then that's below the, the, the cycle actually. Then it wants it output it, then you the user can actually understand it. Now, input processing output. And this is just a perfect example of what happened in the cycle. So it accepts input using the keyboard, the mouse, the camera, the microphone. It sent to the CPU. And as we said, the ALU and the CU and the register, they kick in and start to work. And then memory come up, ROM come up, RAM come up, or whatever is needed in the process, them kick in and start to them job. Then once the processing aspect is finished, and the storage aspect is finished, then it's sent right to output using the monitor, the speaker, and the printer, right? So even when, even when you plug a, a mouse to the system, CPU chip in, right? Plug a keyboard, it chip in because in most cases we, we plug it in, a driver have to be installed for it to work. So all of that chip in and this side, what need to be done. So you see oh, all of these, um, different um, functions actually interrelated. They all need each other to actually carry out a task. They are team processing, right? When we talk about processing, we talk about the CPU. Anytime I hear processing, I think about the CPU. The CPU, um, the center processing unit is the, the CPU processes the instruction it receives from input devices and give the required output using output devices. CPU has four basic functions to perform, right? Four basic function, fetches, or you can say fetch, decode, execute, store. I normally use FDES, so I can remember. Fetch, decode, execute, and store. That's the function I receive, that's what it does. Every process, Everything it carry out having to do with fetching. When you talk about fetching, right? They talk about get instruction from the memory. Fetch, you mean get, right? Decode that binary instruction, then you execute that action and move to the next step, then write an output to memory, right? That's just a simple look. That's all like a simple thing of how this it actually works. So a quick thing you can do on your own reading, find out more about each step of the CPU clock, instruction, machine cycle. Th those things you can do on your own reading. All right, now, the microprocessor CPU chip contains a variety of um, circuit circuitry and components and is connected to the motherboard. In your own reading, find out what does that circuitry mean? So you can actually understand this. As I said, I want to run through this presentation quickly, but there are certain things I won't give information on. 
because it may not be important the same way you can find those information on your own, right? So it's a little definition of what the CPU is, and that's a little picture of it. You can see that. Oh, look, that's a CPU. That's a CPU. A little small thing, flat. You know that we have different types of processor. And I can say different brand. We have Intel, very popular AMD. They are, they are, those are the two popular brands out there. Now, one thing about process, CPU, the processing speed may in megahertz, right? That you have you measure, you have both megahertz and gigahertz, but modern computer, their processing speed is measured into gigahertz, right? In modern computer. A computer word is a group of bit or byte that may be manipulated and stored as a unit. Other functions affect the speed of a computer include RAM, catch memory, buzz width, and buzz speed. I mean, the system, all the system work is that in every system, you have memory, you have the CPU speed. All right, so sometimes I go to the store, I purchase in a system, I would say, yeah, yeah, the common, you know, specs we get is that we get a four gigabyte memory, um, we get a five gigabyte of hard drive, and then say so the CPU speed are like a one, two point oh. And then I go to the store and you buy a, a system and your CPU speed is below two. Don't buy it, right? Because it doesn't make sense having a memory of four, gigabyte and have the CPU speed of 1.2. They won't work together, right? They won't work hand in hand. So in a person a system and buy a, a system have a CPU speed of 2.1 and over or a, gig, or a memory of four gigabyte and over. And we actually look through this when we are talking about um computer specs. So this is the diagram of the machine cycle. So we say step one, first instruction from memory, and then step two, decode the instruction into command, um, at the, and, and, and that's what the control will do. Step three, execute command, um, ALU, and then step four, store results in memory, All right? So that's a simple machine cycle. This is very important to know. Um, take on so you can read up on machine cycle as I said before in, a, in the previous slide. Read up on machine cycle, um, clock, and yes. So, as I said earlier, um, the central process, um, the CPU central processing unit consists of three components the ALU, the CU, and the registry. And this is just a little diagram explaining how it actually works. I mean, I remember this diagram came on CXC before asking the student to label it. So it's good to know this diagram, right? It's good to know where would input file, where output file. You know that input is normally, we normally file the first part of the diagram is normally your input. And the last thing is normally your output. Yeah? I mean, that can't mix. Now in, the, in between now we have CPU, then we see the control, which is the head. Then we see the ALU, then we see, um, the registry, and then with below it that we see the main memory. All of them actually work together to produce one thing, a result. All of them work together to produce just a result so that you can actually understand it. You as a user can understand. So the control unit fetches from, me, from which we actually explain, I won't go through this, I mean, as I said, and, and this there's something on the presentation here. The, the information is not clear, but I will actually pay, post this on my page so you can actually get the presentation um, with the correct information. As I said, this was explained already before. I tend to explain a, a slide before I actually go to it. And then that will take us with the, that will finish up the, um, the processing aspect, right? So in the next video, We'll go through the storage aspect, the storage, input, and output. All right? Thank you.